years ago, I bought an abandoned pot farm in the middle of the Mojave Desert. It's five acres abutting BLM land with a historic 400 square foot 1960s homestead on it that has another 400-ish square feet of additions. The house and the property have been through a lot over the years. Most recently, it was an illegal pot farm run by the mafia, which mafia seems to change depending on who you ask, but either way, nothing good was happening here. Before that, my realtor actually knew the lady who lived here. She was a hoarder and practically buried herself and the property alive. Before that, there were, as my neighbor called them, tweakers out here with horses. And I think before them was an old guy who loved to collect rocks, which you'll see a lot later in the video. The house and the property have been through a lot, so it's taken a lot to even begin to make a dent in making it a home. But compared to my one year recap video where I was a bit hard on myself and comparing myself and my videos to people on the internet, whining a little bit about how I felt like I hadn't accomplished a lot in a year, this year I'm really proud of all I've accomplished. Sure, the house is still a mess, Half of it doesn't have electricity and I'm still living with a $15 burner from Walmart as a stove. But outside, I've really made strides to clean up the place and begin making it my own. If you're interested in the work I've done on the homestead specifically, go watch my one year video because I really haven't done much with the homestead in year two. Basically, all that's been done is that I finished demoing and then patched up the wall in the bathroom, which if you're new to the channel, it used to be there to make a little hallway to an exterior door that I relocated in year one. I also replaced and reframed the doors to my water closet to help keep the house more critter and bug proof. I'm not sure if you want to consider that as an inside or outside project, but it was work on the homestead itself and a pretty small project, so I decided to include it in this list. I began sourcing doors and windows for some very exciting projects coming in year three, so subscribe if you want to stay up to date on that. And of course, there were a million other little quality of life things throughout the year, like finally getting doors on my wardrobes so that my clothes would stop bleaching in the sun, and finally getting drawers to organize the giant pile of tools I've accumulated. I also dabbled in some mechanic work on my Eurovan, which I mostly didn't film, um, but I did do a lot of work on my Suzuki Sidekick last year, which has its own playlist. I'll try to remember to add a card for you all here. I was actually trying to remember exactly what I had done on the Suzuki, so I ended up watching my own videos just to remind myself. So far, the list includes replacing seized lug nuts and studs, new shock struts and CV axles. I upgraded and rewired the radio, and I did a lot of other small things like replace the fan regulator, install battery holder, and replace the worn out shock on the back door. I did end up sending it to the mechanic so that they could replace the seized wheel bearings, but otherwise I'm pretty proud to say I've done all the work on the Suzuki myself. My second year on the homestead has been all about the great outdoors. Reusing and reclaiming materials I've salvaged around the property makes something new. And the moment you've all been waiting for, finally getting a tractor out on the property to remove every single last pothole, post, pit of garbage, and piles of dirt left from the abandoned pot farm. If you follow my channel, no, you didn't miss a video. I only just now got to the tractor work and I decided it was better to put it all together in this video rather than make a separate video only to recap it immediately again in the two year video. But before we get to the big reveal, let me catch you up on some of the other projects I've worked on outside in year two on the homestead. I have spent so much more time cleaning up this property than I ever would have imagined before I bought it. It's not like I couldn't see all the garbage piles and trash everywhere. I knew it would be a lot of work to clean up, but I think I underestimated how tricky sand can be to work with. Over the last two years on the homestead, I've cleaned up the same areas of garbage, including like running the magnet sweeper over the area to gather like screws and nails, probably at least a half a dozen times. It seems like every six months or so, enough of the sand has either blown or washed away to reveal the next layer of trash to pick up. Luckily, except for some choice areas that were literally landfills, most everywhere else on the property finally seems to be slowing down and I think I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. There's been a lot more to clean up the property than just garbage though. I've moved more rocks this last year than I have in my entire life combined. 
Most of the rocks I moved last year have made it into a project you'll see a little later, but others are just being piled up in the corner of the property until I get around to using them, and some of them have not been moved at all yet. Another huge part of cleaning up has been tending to the plants that have been neglected over the years. I had quite a few burn piles to help clean both old piles of brush and branches I inherited and stuff that I've ripped out myself. Anything that has been worth saving and is safe to burn in the wood stove, like branches off the willow tree, I've been piling up for next winter, but things like the creosote bushes I've had to burn outside and the oleander bush I ripped out, I actually took to the dump because apparently the smoke from that's super toxic. A really controversial decision I made last year was to sell the water tank that came with my property. I ultimately decided it was too big for my needs and that I would rather have the money to invest elsewhere. That decision turned out to be the right call because that tank was in much worse condition than I thought and the water that had been sitting at the bottom of that tank for who knows how many years was rank. I got to smell it myself when they went to move it. <laughs> Pulling out that water tank revealed that the old fill valve for it was broken and wasting a bunch of water. So now that that's all fixed up, the whole area is looking pretty spiffy. It's wild to think about how that area was literally an open septic pit covered with sheets of galvanized metal and bags of concrete that had gotten wet and just left to harden strewn about when I first saw it. Now it's pretty much the first piece of the property that's more or less finished. I at least don't have any plans for it in the immediate future. Another part of the property that I basically considered finished is the property line near my one and only neighbor. At one point there had been some sort of a fence and plants being tended in the area, but all that was left was a field of dead stalks to clean up. Something that's pretty interesting about the desert is that stuff doesn't really decompose out here. I can still find horse poop out on my property and there hasn't been any horses out here for roughly like 20 years. Similarly, plants that might have been tilled into the soil to decompose elsewhere where there's more rain and like microbial activity in the soil are just buried here until they eventually get unburied. That's kind of what I was working with in that area that I chose to become a garden bed for some agave plants my realtor gifted me. I had a lot of fun working on that project, which was actually my mom's idea. We were FaceTiming one day, looking at the giant gates left on my property and thinking about what I could possibly use them for, and she came up with the idea of cutting them up to turn them into a garden bed. I was super happy with the results, but that only served to make me look over towards my neighbor's fence line all the more, which wasn't exactly the prettiest backdrop. After some conversations with my neighbor, I ended up installing or reinstalling, depending on how you think of it part of the old privacy fence along that section of his fence line, and it turned out to be a great way to use up some more materials and provide an ideal backdrop to the agave bed I worked so hard to build. The second biggest project of the year was building a retaining wall out of all the rocks buried in the front of my property. The old privacy fence had been partially buried with excavated dirt, I assume from building the greenhouses, and inside those piles of dirt, especially in the front of the house, were so many rocks. Looking back at it now, I really don't think we would have been as successful with this part of the property using the tractors we were elsewhere because of how many rocks were buried in that spot specifically. It makes me feel a little bit better about the months I spent on burying the rocks stacking sections of the wall and then backfilling all that sand shovel by shovel. While that project was a lot of work and definitely the definition of a labor of love, I actually kind of enjoyed the process and I have a couple more spots on the property I'm excited to add retaining walls to in the future. And that catches us up to the most recent video where I had booked a plane ticket for my dad to come out and help, had a tractor rental reserved, and then I was a dummy and tripped and dislocated my knee. While the situation wasn't ideal, my dad and I decided to go ahead with the plan. He just ended up doing a lot more of the work himself because I was still too gimpy to be walking around all day. That did mean I ended up being the primary tractor operator when the tractor was here, and dare I say, I got pretty good. To quote my dad, she didn't scare me too many times. 
We ended up skipping around from project to project a bit more than I thought we would, but it ended up being the most efficient way to use a tractor since we only had it for two days. We started by pulling the cutoff post from the big wooden greenhouse out of the ground, but pretty quickly got sick of taking it so slow over the potholes and took some time to do a first pass smoothing the ground out. From there, we hopped over to pulling the last of the fence panels down before realizing we didn't have a great angle to do the last two panels that were in the corner. So we pivoted back to pulling out the last of the greenhouse posts. Finally, it was time to take the very last of that awful, rickety, poorly built fence down. And let me tell you, even my dad was excited for that moment. He's actually the one who remembered we should probably get a camera out for such a momentous occasion. From there, we just worked our way down the line pulling posts. Most of the posts ended up popping loose of the concrete, which was slightly annoying, but the concrete's buried so deep in the ground I doubt I'll ever see it again. Especially on the back part of the section where I plan to let the desert reclaim some of that land. It wasn't long before we had moved over to the other half of the property where the metal greenhouse was and needed to get all those posts out of the ground. None of those posts were concreted in, but it was really interesting how some of those literally pulled out by hand in the process of trying to attach the chain to them, and some were so stuck in the ground that it broke the rod we were using to pull them out. We ended up calling it quits on day one with about half of the metal posts still in the ground. We started day two by pulling the rest of the wooden fence posts from the east side of the property, which allowed us better access to the remaining metal poles that were around my clothesline. After a good night's sleep, we approached the remaining poles with a new plan and they came out without too much more trouble. From there, I let my dad take the wheel and he got to work grading the property. We set a sprinkler to it to help compact the dirt and that's where it got left while my dad worked on the other projects before hopping on his plane home. After he left, I got to work on some of the nitty gritty finishing details. The first order of business was to try out the grader that had came with my property so I could smooth out the big ruts and tire tracks that were left by the tractor. It worked shockingly well and I'm really excited to have such a great tool at my disposal to help maintain my roads with. From there, it's been a lot of work smoothing the perimeters with a hand rake, picking up garbage that the grader unearthed, and fixing the lumpy ground underneath the clothesline where the tractor or Suzuki couldn't reach. Since we're already in the high 80s out here in the desert, I didn't want to plant too much that would have to be babied by me throughout the summer, but I decided that a bladder pod bush would probably make it just fine without too much hand holding. And I also had one last potted apricot mallow from my realtor that I decided I had a better shot of making it through the summer in the ground than in its pot. Of course, I have a lot of plans for the space and I would like to help speed it along on its recovery by planting some more natives, but I think that will be on pause until fall at this point. So without further ado, I've got some before and after shots for you. If you remember my one year recap video, I was pretty disappointed that I had several goals for year one that I didn't reach. One of those goals was to take down the privacy fence and I gotta tell you there were several moments throughout this last year where I didn't think that was gonna happen this year either. But now when I watch that one year video and hear the disappointment in my voice, it only serves to make me appreciate the accomplishment that much more. That's why I feel like it's really important to capture and share everything, not just the good stuff. There's a reason that there are so many metaphors about the sun shining brighter after the storm. Luckily this year, I didn't feel like there were too many storms, at least not metaphorical ones. I did have quite a few big monsoons last year, including my very first hurricane. We had a lot of rain this last winter, which has made the weeds go crazy this year. It's kind of funny just how much the weeds upset me. In fact, seeing some of the before footage, it's hard to not think the property looked much nicer a few years ago when there were no weeds. Weeds are temporary and I've been doing a mixture of spraying, burning, pulling, and dragging to try and stay on top of it. Unfortunately, I was bedridden with my bum knee right when it would have been best to stay on top of them, so I've been playing a lot of catch up since. The rain was both a blessing and a curse though because it meant that all the good plants I put in the ground have been thriving too. I plan to eventually have a permaculture garden and that means that I'm being really careful and making sure that I'm planting low maintenance native plants on the rest of the property. I definitely don't have time to be fighting mother nature to keep plants alive that aren't gonna be food at some point, with the small exception of a few flowers and succulents decorating the patio. 
I think I said in my one year video, but I'll say it again. One of my favorite things about living in the desert is the wildlife. I can look out of my window and see a lizard or a bird at any moment. I also see my squirrels and rabbits daily, if not weekly, depending on the time of the year, and I'll get a snake sighting from time to time. I've got a great horned owl that comes by every once in a while, sometimes he even brings a friend, and I've seen a couple of coyotes this year too. The Roadrunner has been hanging around a lot lately, which is just the coolest. They're really intelligent and brave birds with big personalities. All of that amazing wildlife serves to counterbalance the bugs like camel spiders, scorpions, tarantulas, and centipedes. That pretty much wraps up my second year on the homestead. Overall, I think it was a great year. I accomplished a lot of my goals and I would say that I even succeeded in my new homestead year's resolution of more happy dances. I think to keep my new homestead year resolution tradition alive, the thing I could do better with this year is to stop overthinking. Looking forward to a lot of the projects I have coming up, there's just so many factors and things to consider that it's really overwhelming and I find myself worrying that I'm going to do something that I'll later regret. To a lesser extent, it's also difficult sometimes to do a project knowing that it's gonna end up on the internet for others to critique. I think it's really important to remind myself of the reason I started the channel and the meaning behind my name. My way of everything isn't meant to mean that my way is the best way or the only way or even the right way. There are a few things in life that are black and white, like this is how you do a project and everything else is wrong. I've had to relearn a lot of things I thought I knew when moving to the desert and of course I'm learning a lot of skills from scratch along the way. But that's why I'm doing all of this. I'm building my own little slice of the desert the way I want it and I need to remember that it's okay to make mistakes and have to do something over down the line. Nothing is permanent and unless it's going to be something that ends up costing me a lot of money, I really don't have to stress about things being perfect the first time around. I've said it before and I'll say it again, thank you a million times over for your support. A year ago, I had less than 500 subscribers and I was basically making my videos just so my family could watch me from the other side of the country. Now I have people commenting from the other side of the world, all rooting for me to succeed and keep pushing forward and it's honestly so wild to stop and think about. Here on my year two homestead versary, I just passed the 5,000 subscriber mark. Your support literally bought me a drone last year. That's something that's been on my wish list since I tried making van life videos four years ago. You all have been a big part in making this last year amazing, so thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Also, a humongous thank you to my dad, who's managed to make it down here twice in the last two years, both times to save my butt. The first time helping me move out of my storage unit on a cross country road trip and dig up and replace my main septic line. And now this time to help me remove the final remains of the abandoned pot farm. In a way, this video feels like the closing of a chapter. The pot farm is gone. The trash is gone. After two years of blood, sweat, and tears, I finally have a blank canvas and I can't wait to get painting. If you want to see the next chapters of The Homestead, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I try to put a video out every other Sunday, but at the same time, I also still have to juggle a full-time job and I'm just one person. So when I get sick or injured, unfortunately The Homestead and the videos have to take a back burner. Either way, your support helps keep me motivated to keep going, to keep making progress and to keep making videos. So like and subscribe to show your support and leave a comment on what you think year three on The Homestead will look like.